This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1223, an excerpt from the book, The Athena Principles, by Kathy Robinson, and I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy middle of the week Wednesday, and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I act as your narrator of the best health and fitness blogs, all for free. I cover fitness, diet and nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots more, just like an audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors, and always with a bit of my commentary at the end. Oh, and then on Fridays, I do something a little different. I answer your questions right here on the show. Now, occasionally on this show, I'll narrate from books, and that's the case here today. Now, I'll tell you about the author right after the reading, but before we get to it, it's Wednesday. And, like I do every Wednesday, I want to provide you with a little bit of inspiration. And I thought this quote was perfect, given the pandemic and the fact that we're about to start a brand new year. So here we go. Quote, When nothing is sure, everything is possible. Margaret Drabble. All right, with that, let's finally get to today's post and start optimizing your life. An excerpt from the book, The Athena Principles, by Kathy Robinson. When I was 34 years old, I could not run one lap around a track. I had a work hard, play hard lifestyle and a corporate career that left me creatively uninspired. When I paused long enough to take a look at the life I was leading and the toll it was taking on my health, I saw what I didn't want to see, an overstressed, overweight, unhappy person staring back at me in the mirror. 20 years later, I crossed the finish line of a 50K ultra marathon, which is about 31 miles. Soon after, I left the corporate world to become a wellness coach, speaker, teacher, blogger, and podcaster. I'm fitter in my 50s than I was in my 30s. Today, I can look in the mirror with love and smile at what I see. What changed? As I reflect on my wellness journey, I find I relied on five principles, which I call the Athena principles. Why Athena? Well, she was the Greek goddess of reason, intellect, and art. Although she carried a spear and shield to signify strength, Athena was also considered the wisest of the Greek gods and is often pictured with an owl on her shoulder. For me, Athena represents the perfect balance between left brain logic and objectivity and right brain intuition and creativity. She was independent, unapologetically herself, and fully owned her power. I believe we all have these traits, and these five Athena principles can help us activate and embody them. Principle one, self-compassion. The care for one's own well-being in the form of self-acceptance and nurturing support. The benefits of self-compassion are broad. Research has shown it can improve self-worth, motivation, depression, body image, and overall happiness. People who incorporate self-compassion practices develop the ability to administer kindness to themselves when they recognize they are hurting. They are better equipped to handle difficult circumstances. It's the difference between emotionally reacting to a situation and calmly responding to it. We can expand our capacity for self-compassion by consistently holding space for ourselves, even if it's for five or 10 minutes at a time. As we routinely settle into the quiet, we begin to hear and trust our inner wisdom and move toward increased well-being. Principle two, intention, a way to help us aim, set direction, and emotionally connect to what we deeply desire. An intention is defined as a determination or resolve to act in a certain way. Intentions are rooted in the present and focused on living in alignment with our personal beliefs and values. They reflect how we feel in our inner world and are designed for long-term change as they are connected to our authentic self. Most importantly, intentions connect us with our why behind the desired change, lending themselves to self-compassionate action. Principle three, consistency. The art of staying committed and engaged, especially during challenging times. When working toward improved well-being, Consistent action is the critical factor in determining success because it leads to reliable outcomes and results. The reverse is true as well. Inconsistent action usually equates to less than optimal results. Repetition creates an environment of continuous improvement where feedback and learning 
can be applied, allowing adjustments to be made in real time while moving toward the intended outcome. This trial and error approach builds trust with our inner knowing and develops new habits we begin to rely upon. As we continue with consistent practice, our level of personal empowerment also increases because we realize that the responsibility for a beneficial outcome lies within us and is the key to moving closer to realizing our intentions. Principle four, growth mindset. How the wellness journey is viewed determines our level of progress and enjoyment. Mindset has two components. Attitude, defined as a mental disposition that predetermines a person's responses to and interpretations of situations, and habit, defined as a regular practice. Attitude and habits are intertwined and play a huge part in who we are and who we will become. Shifts from a fixed mindset of I should to a growth mindset of I will puts the power back into our hands and serves as an accelerator for optimized well-being. When we adopt a growth mindset, we begin to appreciate what is right in our lives. By choosing to focus our energy and resources on the positive instead of focusing on the negative, we take ownership of our emotions and experiences. The more we practice this mindset, the more likely we'll experience challenges as opportunities that will, in turn, position us to move forward with more confidence and ease. Principle five, accountability. A systematic way to check in with what we commit to accomplish, celebrate the wins, and compassionately adjust where needed. Accountability is a powerful determinant of whether or not our wellness intentions will be realized and is an empowering way to live. Our personal power gets a boost every time we own a success or a mistake, when we pause to celebrate a milestone, or when we adjust our plan and move forward on the path we're carving out for ourselves. By doing so, our self-trust increases, as does our ability to model the positive behavior for others. When practicing these principles, we quickly find that optimized well-being is far-reaching and includes a holistic view of our mind, body, and spirit. We learn that we are the result of all the daily decisions we make and are actively creating the person we are becoming. Are you mindfully and consistently choosing what to do and what not to do? Are you compassionately giving yourself what you need right now? Are you living your truth with trust and optimism? Your future lies in the choices you make and actions you take today. Creating a lifestyle that supports healthy habits is the key to optimized well-being. And as you feel better in mind, body, and spirit, you begin to live wholeheartedly, fully embracing who you are so you can do the things that light you up with the people you love. Just like Athena, I believe you already have the strength and wisdom within. You just listened to an excerpt from the book, The Athena Principles by Kathy Robinson. Now the full title of the book is The Athena Principles, Simple Wellness Practices for Overworked Professionals, and you can find it on Amazon. Kathy Robinson is a certified wellness coach, workshop leader, and author. She has spent more than 25 years assessing the wellness of Fortune 500 companies before helping her personal clients optimize their well-being, especially in times of transition or when striving toward new wellness goals. You can find an overview of the Athena Principles and an action plan at athenawellness.com slash action plan. And again, a big thank you to Kathy for letting me share her work. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. When I read the first line of this post, when Kathy shared that as an adult, she couldn't run one lap around a standard track, I was like, hey, that was me too. For the longest time, I couldn't run a quarter mile or basically one lap around a standard track without stopping. This meant I couldn't run for more than a minute without stopping. Now, running four laps around a track is a warm-up for me. Now, this isn't meant as a humble brag, I swear. Instead, I hope this serves as a means to inspire. I used to hear this a lot from my patients and clients. You don't understand. Getting in shape and eating nutritious foods is easier for you. And I tell them, oh no, it's not. I may be in decent shape now, but it definitely wasn't always like that. 
In fact, fast food was a daily thing for me. And again, I couldn't run one lap around a standard track. It took the diagnosis of a chronic disease for me to finally change my health habits. And frankly, I still struggle to find motivation to exercise and plan meals. Why? Because I'm human. But I force myself to do these things because I don't wanna get sicker. Now, I hope you don't have to get sick like me before you decide to change your lifestyle. I always say, if I can do it, you can too. There's nothing that separates us. And as we approach the new year, here's another quote for you, a quote that I love, and I sign off all of my professional emails with this quote. A year from now, you may wish you had started today. All right, that'll do it from me for today. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for being here every day. Thank you for sharing this show with someone. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.